Example of play. This example will show two turns from a two-player game. Player 1 is the strike leader, and has chosen a hacking push ability. Player 2 is the operator, and has chosen the operator's push ability. John Connor has progressed to the second space on the assault track, escalating Skynet's activities. There are Terminator forces active in three regions. The Hunter Killer is also active, and has already eliminated troops in two regions of the board. The sniper rifle has been deployed. It is the strike leader's turn. She decides that destroying the hunter killer is a priority. It is already damaged, but needs four more hits to bring it down. Alternatively, if a troop can make it to an elevated position, they can get a clearer shot, destroying the hunter killer more easily. However, it still requires one more shot to make this possible. There is an elevated position in the next region that the hunter killer will travel to. So both players decide to coordinate their efforts and prepare for the hunter killer to be destroyed next turn, while also managing the other threats on the board. Only one die is available in the active pool, so the strike leader decides to reclaim the dice from the spent pool to increase her options. This requires her to also roll infiltration dice, equal to the current threat. The current threat is only one, so she takes the risk. She decides to use the 5 to block the infiltration attempt, moving both dice to the spent pool. Taking infiltration will make the T-1000 more powerful when it activates. She may take up to 2 command dice, and decides on the 2 and the 4. These are added to the strike leader's player board. Die values must always be placed in ascending order in each column, and dice can only be added to the top or bottom of a column, never between 2 previously placed dice. Up to 4 actions may be taken on a turn, with each player taking a maximum of 2 actions. Each player may activate each column of dice only once per turn. The strike leader has the following options. Commit a regular, on the board, to a task with either of the two values in this column. Commit an officer, on the board, to a task with either of the two values in this column. Spin multiple dice from either column to access that column's planned actions, shown alongside the dice or, use her special roll ability in place of either column's action. When you commit a regular or an officer on the board to a task, move the appropriate miniature behind the blue line, and complete a matching task with a value that corresponds to one of your dice. Among the most common tasks are, combat, and supplying a deploy card. A committed troop may not be used again this turn, and will not defend against Terminator attacks during the Skynet phase. She decides to place her player marker in region 2. Because the strike leader has two full rows of dice on her player board, she can make two troop movements. First, she moves a regular into the elevated position. This gives a die value modifier to officer tasks on that side of the board. It also allows players to utilize the sniper rifle that has been deployed. Next, she moves a different regular to the current card on the assault track to avoid the damage it will do to the fate track at the end of the turn. For her officer action, the strike leader commits an officer in her region. The elevated position enables her to use her 5 value die as a 4, so she successfully completes this combat task, weakening the terminator force. This task represents the added battlefield tactics that officers can provide. She then spends one supply from the sniper rifle deploy card, to use its ability completing the final task to destroy the Terminator force in Region 2. The miniature is removed but the tile is left in place, as there is a chance that the Terminators will reactivate using their secondary power source. Using a deploy card ability is not an action, so the strike leader may still use her other column of dice, which controls regular troops. She decides to use her special role ability, which allows her to complete a combat task of value 2 in any region. She chooses Region 1 and destroys the Terminator force there, committing one regular to the task. The Operator player may also take actions on the Strike Leader's turn. However, they must spend command dice to do so, and may not spend the last die in either column. His player marker is located in Region 4, so he spends his 5 value command die to commit a regular and damage the Hunter Killer. It is now damaged enough so that a shot from an elevated position will destroy it. The operator cannot take any further actions, so the action phase ends. Now, the strike leader has the option of using her push ability. 
she decides to use it, as it allows her to see the next card that Skynet will commit to the command line. Using a push ability grants Skynet one extra reinforcement order, so a card is revealed from the command deck, and the reinforcement marker in the corresponding region is increased by one space. Then, as the push ability tile dictates, the striker leader reveals the top card from the command deck, and can now better assess her options going into the Skynet phase. Before Skynet activates, players have the opportunity to attack the network. One card must be removed from the command line. The strike leader removes this card, as the resulting sequence of hacking symbols allows her to break the network's security tile in her region. She resets the security tile and reveals a connected protocol tile. It is one of the protocols needed to reprogram the T-800, so it is placed in the corresponding area. Two more of these will need to be found during the game. Next, Skynet repairs the gap in its command line by drawing a card from the top of the deck. Because of the strike leader's push ability, this card is already revealed, and is now moved to fill the gap. Then, Skynet will activate. First, Terminator forces already on the board will attack. Each Terminator draws two cards from the top of the command deck. Then, assess the threat icons on the revealed cards. If the Terminator is using its primary power source, denoted by the red tile, it will use the card with the most threat icons. A damaged Terminator will use the card with the least threat icons. If the number of icons equals or exceeds the number of uncommitted resistance troops, one troop is eliminated. Advanced units also activate now. In an area with no Terminators, the Hunter Killer will increase the rate of reinforcements. In an area with Terminators, it will eliminate troops, giving preference to those in building positions. In this case, the reinforcement marker is advanced by one space, and the Hunter Killer travels clockwise to the next region. Advanced units each have unique behaviors, and you must use different tactics to destroy them. The tank will stay in one region, and will destroy building positions, eliminating troops inside, before attacking the troops directly. Next, damaged Terminator forces may reactivate. Draw one reactivation tile for each tile on the board without a miniature. If it is blank, discard it and the tile from the board, these Terminators are destroyed. If the tile is not blank, these Terminators access their secondary power source and reactivate. Replace the tile on the board with the reactivation tile, and place a miniature on it. Then, Skynet issues reinforcement orders. In each region, advance the reinforcement marker one space for each card in the command line showing that region's number. This may cause new terminators to arrive in a region. A troop in an elevated position is able to identify terminator forces before they arrive, allowing players to better prepare. The final step of Skynet's activation is to advance the threat marker one space. Then, count the number of threat icons to the left of the marker. If the total equals or exceeds the current threshold, Skynet deploys a new advanced unit. The current threshold is 6, so nothing happens. Lastly, the assault track is resolved for this turn. All cards slide one space to the left. Cards that fall off the end of the row will deal damage to the fate track, equal to the value shown. Unless a troop has been committed to negate this effect. In this case, a regular was committed to this card, so nothing happens. The card is discarded and the regular is placed back on the board in any region. This concludes the strike leader's turn, and play passes to the operator. All committed troops are now moved back to the ready position. He decides not to reclaim command dice, as the T-1000 will soon activate, and he does not wish to suffer any more infiltration. He takes the single die remaining in the active pool. The operator adds the one value die to his regular column, and moves to region 3. He can make only one troop movement, and uses it to move a regular to the elevated position. Then he commits a regular who, with the aid of the elevated position, takes the last shot to destroy the hunter killer. He then commits an officer to add three supply crates to the sniper rifle, as there are now two troops in elevated positions, providing an opportunity to maximize the effectiveness of this deployment. The strike leader decides to discard a die from each column to take two actions. Both are used to complete the two combat tasks needed to destroy the reactivated Terminator. Both an officer and a regular must be committed to achieve this. Play will continue with the operator deciding whether or not to use his push ability, followed by the Skynet phase, in the same manner as shown before. Because the players have not committed any troops to the assault track this turn, damage will be inflicted to the fate track.
When the command deck is exhausted, escalation occurs. John Connor advances one space on the assault track. Then, the entire command deck is reshuffled and new cards are dealt to Skynet's command line. For each space that John Connor has advanced, deal an extra card. In this way, Skynet will escalate its response to your progress. Escalation also triggers the T-1000, which now activates. First, the T-1000 replaces an officer in the region of the player with the most infiltration markers. Then, all infiltration markers on player boards are placed in the activation area in the T-1000's area of the board. Turn over an infiltration card and execute the highest value effect possible. Without the value exceeding the number of infiltration markers in the activation area. Spin infiltration markers equal to the red number beside the effect. If there are infiltration markers remaining on future turns, the T-1000 will continue to activate. Rather than eliminating troops on the battlefield, the T-1000's mission is to infiltrate your command, so its effects will often tamper with your command dice, and your ability to issue orders. Escalation will occur twice in every game, meaning that the T-1000 will also activate twice. Managing your infiltration while ensuring you have the required command dice to carry out necessary tasks on the battlefield is vital to ensuring victory. Once John Connor has reached the final space on the assault track, you have until the command deck is exhausted again to win the game. At this stage, Skynet will begin scrambling its defense codes each turn, making it more difficult for you to complete the final hack that will provide John Connor with access to central command. But if you are successful, Skynet will be destroyed and the T-800 will be sent back in time to protect young John Connor in 1995, ensuring that the future is not set, and there is no fate but what we make for ourselves.